Hello everybody, um, my name is Madison. I'm going to show you how I made this card today using Hello Wooer products as well as some others. Um, I started with the Fairy Glade Scene Horizontal Die and kind of laid out what I wanted. I used the Garden Party Stamp, Garden Party Friends, and Field My Stamps as well as all the coordinating dies. Um, here they are. <laughs> Um, so I started this project with some, you know, critters I had already colored and cut, some I had stamped, and some I had just colored that were waiting to be cut out. Um, so I'm going to start coloring some of the images I don't have done already. One of them is this field mouse. Um, I'm using my Copic markers. Uh, they are the warm grays, W1, 2, 3, and 5. Um, the images are stamped on recollections or, um... Michael's cardstock. It's just white, 110 pound. It's really thick, so I find it holds up nice. Um, and uh, yeah, I used uh, Gina K black ink to stamp them with my Misty. Um, yeah. Later on, I also use some R20 to add some pinkness to the nose, cheeks and ears of the mouse. Um, next, I have this bird playing what I would assume is a violin of some sort. I actually don't play musical instruments, so, you know, if you know what this is supposed to be, let me know, but I'm pretty sure it's a violin. Um, anyways. I used the warm grays on the face again, and um, I kind of kept it a bit lighter than the mouse. I believe it was just W3, 2, and 1 on the face, um, as well as some R20 for some cheeks. And um, I made this a bluebird, um, which I guess is kind of fitting with the Hello Bluebird theme. <laughs> um, so I used uh, B05, B14, and B02. I find the 5 is particularly darker than the 14 for some reason, um, so I use that as my darker shade, and I usually start with my darkest shade, and then I add my middle and my lightest, and then if I need to go back and redefine any of my shading, I will. Um, on the bird's face, I did add some streaks with my darker color at the end to kind of give it a feather texture, because it is a bird. I didn't really want a flat wash on him or her. So, I also used YR17 and 04 for the beak, just to give it something. And here I'm using E57 and E55 on the violin. I just kind of put it everywhere, because I didn't feel like making it that fancy. They're in a garden, after all. <laughs> so here I'm doing the bugs, and I believe they're dancing. They're having a good time. <laughs> I'm using... E67, 63, and 61 for the green one, and I'm using N4, N5, and N7 on the ladybug, as well as the skinnier stripes on the middle bug. So, here I am doing that. And then for the middle bug, I'm using YR27, 24, and 26 to color him this orangish yellow color. I tried to keep it with some neutrals, keep the color palette kind of nice. Um, I'm using R39, 29, and 24 to make my ladybug, ladybug colored. Um, here I'm coloring this bee, like tuning a horn I guess. Um, I'm using the same colors from the yellowish bee from before and um, my neutral grays for his uh, face and stripes. Then there's this cricket. I used the same greens from earlier to color him in. Um, he's one of my favorite images from this stamp set. He's playing a fiddle or something and he's really cool. So <laughs> I really like him. He seems like one of the coolest images they've released so far. Um, I'm also using BG000 on the wings and BG11. And just some brown for his fiddle. Um, here I am adding the same greens from earlier uh, to my frog. 
I'm a little disappointed that they don't have more frog images. As you could tell by my channel name, frogs are my favorite and one of my favorite animals. Um, they're very cool, very neat, very cute. I like frogs. Um, so I'm a little disappointed that there's only one more frog added in the stamp set. But it's pretty cute, so I guess it makes up for it. Because we get all the bugs and stuff, so it's, it's a cute set. I just wish there was more frogs so I could have a bigger frog party on a card. But such is life. Um, I kind of, I, I, if you noticed, I keep using these three same greens. Um, when I do make cards, I initially pick out a color palette and I tend to stick with it the entire time. I find it helps keep a more cohesive look with all my cards. Um, and I try not to add any extra colors in as I go. I just find it's, it adds just the sense of unity and planning to the card and it's really obvious so that is why i keep using the same three shades of green <laughs> so with this frog i also added texture to him right now you can't well you can kind of see um i'm adding like i'm stippling just a whole bunch of little dots in certain areas to kind of give him a spotted texture because frogs you know they come spotted they come with a whole bunch of texture and stuff. It could be a toad. Toads are lumpy, you know? Just making him look more like a frog. Here I'm using the same three reds to color this mushroom top. Um, yeah. So there's that. Um, I'm coloring what I think are the gills of a mushroom. Um, with E57 and E55. Just adding really light shading. Uh, here I'm using E30 and E31, which are quite pale and light. And I'm coloring like the stems of these mushrooms just to give them something. But I'm not like particularly shading too much on this image because it, it will be covered up um, with the bug. Um, and I mean, it, it is quite small, so. And I'm using YR27, 24, and I do bring in, um, the 26 later, um, just to color this other mushroom. Um, so here I have these grass pieces from the fairy glade scene horizontal die i had cut it out of some strathmore bristol cardstock and or paper i suppose um i'm using uh, mowed lawn and uh, peel paint here so i'm putting the mowed lawn just kind of on the top to kind of give it that i don't know green grass look because grass is green and i am putting the peeled paint on the bottom um, to kind of warm it up a little bit, make it a little more fitting with the color theme. Because I did stick with some more very, you know, jade kind of greens. Make it look more fallish. So, I am just going back and forth with these colors until I have an even blend. So after I had uh, inked these, I took my Gansai Tanby watercolors and I used some green and brown and splattered all over them. Next I took uh, the sky pieces and I used a speckled egg distress oxide all over it. Um, I didn't really particularly do any sort of blending, I just kind of worked from top to bottom and just let it do whatever. So. Yeah, this is a newer ink from Tim Holtz, and I, I quite like it. It's not too blue, and it fit really well with this muted fall theme. Um, so once I had done all my pieces and they had dried, I took 
the Scansi Tambi shimmer watercolors and I just used the white one and I added some interest to the background of the sky. Next I took these mushroom tops um, and I used a fired brick and spiced marmalade oxides again. I used oxides for the whole card. I find they are quite smooth and they apply quite nicely so I also used a piece of paper throughout the course of inking all these um, to kind of prevent myself from getting too many fingerprints on all these pieces. So I also added the Gansai Tambi um, sparkles watercolor um, to them just to kind of make them more interesting. And I did the mushroom stems with fossilized amber on the tops and um, walnut stain on the bottom. Um, I tried my best to blend them. So yeah. Um, I did half of my grasses in cracked pistachio. Just pouncing it on there because they are so hard to add color to. And the other half I used lucky clover um, just to give some variance in color here I'm cutting my cardstock it's recollections and I cut it to seven inches by eight and a half and I scored it in the middle of the seven inches side at three and a half to fit um, the border And I just made sure it was nice and flat with my bone folder. Here I am using my Misty and my Gina K ink yet again, and I will be stamping it's a sentiment on the inside of this card. I am using the Lawn Fawn Happy 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 stamp set, and I'm just kind of placing them sort of in the middle. I didn't really particularly use any grid for this one just because it's on the inside and I just just tried my best and it was good enough. So here I am stamping it. Um, it took a few tries but it, it turned out good. Got a good impression. And I am making this a birthday card. There it is. And we let that dry. Next I'm taking the more black recollections cardstock and I am taking the garden party stamp set. And I'm using one of the main sentiments, which is let's celebrate you. And I'm going to emboss that. So I'm using um, Simon Says Stamp clear ink. And I'm just kind of inking it up. I had used a homemade powder tool to kind of prep my paper beforehand. Um, it's just filled with baby powder to prevent static. And um, I'm using, I believe it's Ranger um, Fine White Embossing Powder. And I'm just heating it up until it melts and it's completely melted. After it had cooled completely, I then took these Lawn Fawn banner dies and I lined it up and cut it out with a big shot. There it is. So here I am just mounting um, the frame from the die and uh, I'm using the Be Creative tape just to kind of get a good hold. I believe it's the 1 8 inch because it is quite a skinny um, frame. So I'm just putting it on all the edges and I don't show it, but I did use my bone folder to kind of press it in and I'm just removing some of the tape from one side and I'm just gonna line it up on my card and then proceed to take off the rest of the tape. Um, it kind of helps with lining it up and making sure it's straight without committing all the way and just kind of messing it up because that has happened a few times and it's not fun trying to take it off when you use this tape because it is so sticky. So. Um, 
here I am just kind of assembling the entirety of the background um, of the fairy glade horizontal die. Now that I have everything colored and cut, it's time to start the gluing process, which is quite extensive because there are so many pieces. But I'm starting off with my biggest pieces, um, which are the ground pieces. They also have corners, so I find that they're best for lining up first, just to kind of get it, everything sort of set up. And then I'm using this big chunk of the sky um, for the ground and the sky pieces and for a lot of other things in this card. I am using my ATG gun uh, to glue them down as well as some Lawn Fawn liquid ink or liquid glue, my bad, um, from the glue pen just for the smaller pieces, um, things I couldn't use my ATG gun on. And then after the big pieces, I proceeded to glue my mushroom, the big red one, once again using ETG and liquid glue. Um, so, yeah. So next I am doing what I would consider the most tedious part of making this card, which is gluing all these tiny little mushroom circles um, from the spots into place. I had set them aside after I had first cut the, uh, the die out of the paper just to try to keep them in sort of clean and try to keep them all in check so I didn't lose any, which fortunately I didn't. Next, I am gluing in this grass, these grass pieces from earlier um, when I colored them and the sky and I uh, I have this the die in front of me for reference as to where pieces go as like a guide so I don't mess it up and glue the wrong pieces in the wrong places so so Pretty much for the rest of the background, it is the same thing, using various glues to glue down all these pieces um, with the die in front of me for reference. I also used um, the acrylic blocks, are these acrylic blocks? We got them from Lawn Fawn, um, just to hold my pieces down as they glued to try and keep everything sort of flat um, as it looks a lot nicer with the inlay design in the end. So, yeah. Right, now that the background's done, I have the last part of my card to do, which is glue down all of the images I had die cut and colored. So I am using a liquid glue, ATG gun, and these 3D foam squares in a large and a small size for my images. So I am kind of popping up this bird um, after gluing the mushroom down flat to give it more dimension, like he is sitting on top of a mushroom, per se. I had laid everything out before I glued it down, just to ensure that I did, like, kind of my design 
and thought everything fit where it should. So, yeah. I am also using these foam squares on the frog. I had to cut one to make it fit, but there he is, jumping, very happy, good for him. Um, and yeah, I just kind of repeated the same process of gluing everything down uh, with all my images. Here I am, uh, angling this guy playing the fiddle down um, to make it look more like he is playing to a crowd and like he's really, you know, playing that fiddle like he's giving his all. I also have the little bee tooting his horn facing the crowd like they are performing together. They are in a band and they are best friends. <laughs> and I also used the bee creative tape to glue down my sentiment just for some extra hold keep it on the card. Really nice. So next I am using these jelly roll pens to clean up my lines, add detail. I use the white, uh, the glitter, and the glaze in black to, you know, add dimension. I use the black glaze on eyes and antennas. And that's it. It's very shiny. Um, so yeah, feel free to like and subscribe. Bye.